Hi, everybody. Another edition of Tartar Sauce. I'm Steve Tartar. And with me today, Ahava Moray. Yes. Ahava Moray, who has, I love that name, by the way. Thank you. Um, also known as Mary Givens. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there going, is that Mary? It is. It's <laughs> Ahava, but she's Mary. Um, you have a talk, a very unusual thing here. You have a talk show. Now it's on YouTube. Yes. And you're trying to get it on the public access I cable am. here in Peoria. Mm -hmm. um, now, what what's the show about? I think I know a little bit. You've been talking to me, but why don't you tell us what, what it's about? Well, the show is called Mike's Uncut, and I created it for underground artists, entrepreneurs, and what I call game changers. And the crux of the show really is to highlight people who are making significant strides and sacrifices to reach their goals and um, follow their dreams. And you're trying to kind of give them a little, uh, I guess, leg up or give them a platform. Mm -hmm. Hey, here, here's so-and-so. Maybe now, what are some of the, the aspects? Have you had poet? Now, you mm -hmm. yourself write poetry, mm -hmm. have had published poetry. Um, poets, musicians. Yes, a lot of musicians. A lot of musicians. Well, Authors. They, they're always looking to get their name out because, mm -hmm. oh, you know, have you seen so-and-so? He or she is so good, mm -hmm. and then you, you know about them. But if you don't know about them, that's where your show comes in. Mm -hmm. um, in season one, we even had a ghost hunter. <laughs> a ghost hunter? Yes. Ah, okay. Well, now that's always good. They say this place is haunted downstairs here in the drum oh, store. Don't but tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you're safe up here. It's always uh, No, there's there's certain places in town. Now, now see, you had to mention ghost hunting. Now I'm going to digress here. Uh, the Peoria Public Library, Peoria High School, and I think there's, oh, there's a place on High Street. Mm -hmm. These are all places where apparently they've, the ghost folks have gone around and said there's a ghost here, oh, wow. but I haven't ver verified that. There's people who know more about that than I do. Well, Mike's uncut, mm -hmm. um, and I love your little logo. I don't know if people can see uh, this. Chase and Doe, I love that logo. It's he designed it for me. Microphone all tied up, <laughs> but um, you, you're, you're filming at the George Washington Carver Community Center. Mm -hmm. You had been at uh, Lit on Fire, the mm -hmm. little uh, used bookstore, mm -hmm. which I love, by the way. They've mm -hmm. just moved to uh, Main Street. That's right. So there, uh, J uh, Jessica Stevenson, Stevenson. Yes, she's over there, and um, we we'll have to get Jessica on here sometime because um, I have a thing about bookstores. You know, mm -hmm. it's like they're you know newspapers have taken it on the chin. Mm -hmm. All all this, you know, you you yourself would stand up for for print because uh, we need to, folks. Yeah. But um, the bookstore is still alive, it and is. the used bookstores is, is particularly good because you can get some bargains and. Anyway, I she use, does a lot for local authors, I think. So you see, she's doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You'll notice on this show, we digress a lot. <laughs> we stay on one topic for about 12 seconds and then we go off. Um, so, how now, what is your story? Because you were telling me before you grew up in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Where? Where about? I am from Youngstown, Ohio. I okay. was raised there in between Cincinnati. I mostly grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, okay. Well, you know, do you, now, let me ask you this. Um, I used to work for a company that was based in Cincinnati, so we'd go back there once a year for the meetings. And my initial observation uh, was Cincinnati's like a big Peoria. <laughs> it's on the river. It's got a little German thing going on behind the scenes. <laughs> it's it funny. makes a lot of beer. Um, it's got a little bit of a you know blue-collar type town. Mm -hmm. What's your thought? Now, I, I, I haven't kept up with Cincinnati, so maybe that's changed. It has definitely evolved in the last... Um I would say a few years since I've really lived there, mm -hmm. but that's actually a nice perception. I think I agree with you on that. Okay. Um, now it has a really huge arts culture, but it's it's pretty segregated. Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, and that's that's something we need to work on here because I know the arts culture here, and you're probably knowing more and more people that are, that are in this uh, group. Um, it's trying to come out here in Peoria. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just uh, painting, but but music. Uh, poetry, I mean, all the different arts. I know we've written some articles about it, and it just seems like it's, you know, the the, the whole warehouse district thing mm -hmm. is going on. There's, there's a lot of New movement. New business is popping up. Yeah. yeah. Now, entrepre and that's another thing. You have entrepreneurs mm -hmm. down here. So does that mean if somebody has a, a new business, they come on your show and talk about what they're doing? Absolutely. And it, it it's not only to get them out, um, but one of our past guests um, – Ann Peterson, she self-published 14 books, and she also provides consultation services for that. So if you want to start that or, or have it relate to someone else, an entrepreneur on the show, mm -hmm. it's just really inspirational for them to provide those nuggets and talk about how they really got into that and what resources they use. So she would help people who, like, oh, I always wanted to write a book, mm -hmm. and then she can help. She's oh. great, yes. Oh, very good. Um, well, what's, what's the hardest thing about 
this uh, Mike's Uncut doing this show because wow. obviously <laughs> you, you're probably doing you, you you told me before you you do social work during the day mm-hmm. so you're busy and now you come to the to the evening or weekends or whatever you're doing this um what's the hardest part about doing this this show is it finding the folks or just no that I organizing don't think that'd it? Be it. I, it'd probably be organizing that's that's such a loaded question <laughs> well we, we that's what we do here <laughs> We, we load them up and we fire them. That's, that's what we do. And it would probably be the time management. Um, the artists, some of them have published five, a dozen books. So um, I want to be competent and provide them with a quality interview. And you can't do that if you haven't listened to their music on oh, iCloud, good. Reverb Nation, or read their books. Sure. Um, that's really doing them a disservice. So trying to well, read and, and listen to all that music, it's Yeah, it's a I, lot mean, of I was going to say, just to, so you know exactly kind of what they're doing exactly. and you can draw well, you kind of sound like well I mean they probably wouldn't like it if you said you sound like so and so uh, they might say no I don't I'm my own person <laughs> mm-hmm. but but you have that at least uh, an idea of, of the, the folks what is Peoria now you've been in another place Cincinnati and so forth is Peoria a hotbed of talent hotbed yeah be a little more <laughs> I don't specific. know why I use that word <laughs> that's the word I use well, I, you know, is, is there a lot of talent here there is and I, I think um What is surprising, though, is that I'm meeting more people that I had no idea um, were here or finding out that businesses have popped up in the the warehouse district that have been there for quite some time. And I think just the promotion of those things is lacking here. I mean, we're definitely not a metropolitan city, but that does not mean that there are not some really um, big key players here and talented people here. Well, that's a good point because it does seem like – and, you know, we're we're, we're really doing the same thing you are sometimes, maybe not – you know, exclusively because obviously we cover crime and, and, you know, what's going on in the schools mm-hmm. and everything else. But in addition, you know, I think the newspaper and, and probably the media in general, TV, uh, we try to find things. I think maybe the point you made a little bit was that the mainstream media, and I guess mm-hmm. we have to be, you know, say that's what we are, doesn't always explore enough. Mm-hmm. You know, they kind of stay with what's right out in front, mm-hmm. the known uh, folks, Obviously, we go with the Civic Center, whatever's playing there, mm-hmm. uh, the established folks. But the folks that aren't established yet, that's a, that's a, they have a harder road to, to mm-hmm. hoe. So um, what, what advice do you have for people that, that you know, they think, well, I, I wish more people knew what I do or mm-hmm. what I do. Contact you or, or is there, you know, what's, what's the, the process? Well, um, I'd be extremely honored <laughs> and humbled. But yeah, if, if people are interested in being on the show, I definitely have to give a shout out to Cassie Killey. She's my web designer and quite possibly the most patient person I've ever met in my life. Wow. Um, but she's the most patient yes. person. <laughs> That's an honor right she, there. She uh, just designed um, an application for me and implemented it on my website that you can submit if you're interested in being on the show. Mm. And it helps me consolidate all the information instead of sending a thousand emails back and forth. And it gathers the social medias, the bio, if you started a business and um, if you're a member of ASCAP, BMI, things like that. Hmm. Um, so I can review that. Um, but I would encourage people to um, try to focus on something that can promote them. And it could be probably the best thing right now is a media outlet. So if it's starting a blog and just rocking that out, starting mm-hmm. um, a short film or um what is it going live with themselves like mm-hmm. and doing a, a video diary mm-hmm. um, trying to just get themselves out there and let people know who they are because you know I'm thinking and we had Paul Gullifer from Bradley on recently and you know his point was he does communications at Bradley and he said boy the world has changed since he started there's so much coming at us now mm-hmm. there's so many you know the the internet is just I mean right. it's, it's obviously almost infinite I don't know if it really is infinite but it seems to be and, you know, you just you just wonder how do you sift – I mean, there's probably a lot of good stuff on there that I haven't got to yet mm-hmm. or won't get to because it just – you know, it's just not possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, dealing with that is not easy. Mm-mm. I mean, you're no, na- it's not. navigating Under- it. Right, navigating mm-hmm. understanding yeah. is definitely not. Um, now, we, we should mention, folks, are getting, what, what is that show again? It's Mike's Uncut, M-I-C-S mm-hmm. Uncut. I'm sure if you do a Google search on that, mm-hmm. they'll find your website. And and probably some other things that, that Ahava you have up there. Com. What is it? Ahava now dot com. Ahava now n o w dot com. Okay, and we a h a v a h is ahava. So how'd you come up with that one? Ahava means love in Hebrew. Oh. And um, 
I, I love that concept. And basically, I just try to embody what my interpretation of God is, and, and that's love. I definitely have my faults. I'm still working on it. Um, but that's what I want to be reminiscent of when I interact with people. Very good. Very good. Um, now, you've had a number of people on your show uh, over the over the, the year you've been doing it. You've been doing it about mm-hmm. a year. Um, what what have you taken away from that? What, what's kind of – obviously, you can say, well, this individual was – great to talk with or whatever but what what have what kind of um you know immediate sort of thoughts have you had since doing that i mean is it it's a really good question um two things come to mind one is that i would say the majority of the guests are authors and musicians Mm -hmm. every single one of them is different they're so dynamic and i can't lump them together, even if they represent the same genre, they, mm-hmm. they definitely have their own personalities and their own struggles and sacrifices. Mm-hmm. The second one would be that I might have bitten off a little more than I could chew. <laughs> why, do you, why do you say that? There's there's so many moving parts, and I've, I've said this before, but I'm, I'm definitely learning as I go along. I feel like I went from a poet to a businesswoman overnight, and there, there's so much to learn um, from the macro to the micro part of it, the admin part. Well, sure, because, I mean, when you think about it, um, any interview show, any talk show you might see, there's a producer involved. Mm-hmm. There's probably several assistants. There's, you know, in other words, people doing other things that allow the exactly. on-air talent exactly. just to do, well, I'll do questions or I'll do this. Uh, you got all those roles in one. Most so, of them, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's 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 good. It's called ambitious. See, and that's unique. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's good to keep up. Um, what's, what's next for you? Have you got a plan or is this, or what's, what's your, what's your, you know, immediate future plan? Well, Get the I, show on public <laughs> access. I know that. Yes. Okay. We definitely, I'm definitely, I just started working with a grant writer. Hmm. Um, I definitely would like to secure funding, um, investment sponsorship so that we can bring in more people, um, so that I can reimburse artists who are traveling. I've had artists from hmm. Chicago and St. Louis and um, I do what I can, and they're very gracious. But it will be nice to be able to compensate them more, be able to bring in artists from more places. Absolutely. Um, and also to maybe one day get syndicated or have a streaming license. Sure. Well, I mean, I think that's that that would be, you know, certainly conceivable in today's world because it's like, you know, YouTube, you go from YouTube mm-hmm. to, to the, literally to the world. Mm-hmm. What What is the... You know, sort of the the type of person that maybe you haven't had that you'd like to, uh, whether in terms of a career or a pursuit. Um, is there somebody out there that you'd you'd kind of like to? I mean, because you said you've had um, writers and and uh, musicians. Mm-hmm. What else? What 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 what? what I've what had um, a fitness health expert and fitness uh, professional, and she came from Columbus. My dear friend Danielle Miranda. Um, that was different for us, and everyone just loved her. Um, but we haven't had any dancers. I, oh. I would love to have um, more athletes and dancers. Athletes and dancers. Well, you know, it's, it, it, that's that's certainly conceivable. You're going to get some now, I think. <laughs> oh, she wants dancers, and they're going to they're gonna, they're going to let you know. You'll have to. I don't know how you'll do the um, preparation for that. Right. You have to, you know, look for some tape. Um, <laughs> when 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 you were like growing up. Uh, what, what what TV shows or what was your what inspired you? I don't know why I say oh, TV shows. It could have been <laughs> music or, or books or well, poetry. You know, my favorite TV show. If we're, we're talking about um, the word escapes me, but if you're not speaking about animated shows, then I I would say Family Matters. That might oh, yeah. be super corny or date me, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was no, my a favorite TV show. show. <laughs> well, what about animated? You were gonna say animated? There are too many. Um, you my like my favorite shows. would be um, yes, it would be um, Cities of Gold. That was oh. a show that I came um, in contact with as a child living abroad. I don't think it aired here. Wow, I was going to say, uh, was that a European? Or? I think so. Oh. Yes. Okay. Um, but they they definitely promoted diversity, and huh. it was um, about a group of children who went on search for the infamous Cities of Gold. It's oh, pretty you awesome. Know, I think I've heard of it. But I don't <laughs> think I've seen it. Well, it's it's certainly a good premise. Well. Uh, you know that that's a you know. What about movies? What movies? Favorite movie would be. That's a tie too. Um, 
The Lake House and A Princess Bride. Oh. And have Princess plenty. Bride. That's, <laughs> I always, Princess Bride was, a, a, I think, I remember that one. I didn't see it when it first came out. Um, but when my kids were little, I'd go to the, this is, you know, a while back, where I'd go to the video store to find some mm-hmm. thing that would occupy them. And, you know, I'm looking over the, the children's rack, and I, I got Princess Bride. It was whatever. That was the one thing that was weird, and I don't know if you remember um, video stores in their sort of glory days. Seems so long ago. Well, right? it, it does. <laughs> and, and I really had a problem with the way they categorized things mm-hmm. because action movies <laughs> would be like nine-tenths of the store, you know, and it'd be like, and then, you know, there could be a kid's section or there'd be that, but it was, anyway, that's another matter. But I'd get, I got Princess Bride, took it home, and I thought, well, this would be good. And I wound <laughs> up thinking, this is a show for adults. You know, i got to watch yeah. this thing. And it was, it was classic. I mean, of course, it's yeah. called Favorite now. Um, so poetry. Now, when, were you writing poetry as, as a youngster? Not well, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you developed, right? Yes. What, what drew you to poetry? I am not sure. I, I honestly feel it was a God-given gift, and my mother tells me it definitely came from my father, who was also artistic. Mm-hmm. My mom's more of an academic, practical, def- definitely more of a practical type person. Oh. Well, you got to have that. you <laughs> yeah. got to have that. Uh, no, because I think poetry sometimes gets um, forgotten, mm-hmm. you know, a little yeah. bit. Because it's, it's, I don't know, it's looked at as something you do in school or, you know, and we always refer to the, to the classic poets. I mean, at least the average person, there's people who are, are into it. And, and they obviously know today's modern poets, mm-hmm. which I, I would have to tell you I don't know. But uh, Emily Dickinson, mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, Swift and all this stuff, Frost. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think there's there's real power in poetry. Yeah. And, and of course, it goes into music as well, mm-hmm. songwriting. Do, do, you, do you feel about writing songs? People have, have said that, um, asked me that, and asked me about putting my poetry on audio, but I've... I've listened um, to the different podcasts, and I don't feel like I have that mellifluous type of voice. Yeah. <laughs> and I also don't think I'm, I'm the best spoken word artist um, who really um, bring a performance and an energy um, into the stage. So I, I really don't think that's my talent. I think it's more in the writing. Oh, very good. Well, I mean, hey, you, that's what you, if you know what you think you, you can do, that's, that's half the battle. Um, now, when is your next show going to be on, your next interview? Is that coming up, or do you have to be determined? <laughs> well, um, we, for the most part, just wrapped up season two on Wednesday. Um, we what, filmed, what's a season? It's Season one had 11 people, and I believe two is going to be 11 as well. So you're kind of following the cable TV world of seasons where it's an undefined number, and it could end <laughs> at any time, could start at any time. That wasn't one intentional, two but I've, I've learned to try to let go of some of the mistakes. <laughs> But now, uh, so which season is season three uh, soon to happen? Well, um, we're planning to we're planning to take a month off just so that we can regroup and so you're on gather more hiatus. People. That might be too strong uh, a word. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to use the words of the trade. We're, we're on a break. <laughs> you're on a break. Okay. Well, hey, that's good to have a break. And then you hope to have it on the public access mm-hmm. uh, channel at some point. Uh, maybe for the new season. I would love to. Mm-hmm. But we are building the schedule now, so people should definitely submit that application um, if they're interested. And that's on your website? Yes. Okay. There's an app- and and why, the application is what? Just so people you can, you can get an idea of what yes. somebody is talking about. I'm very meticulous and organized, and mm. I'm also— Like your mom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I also believe that professionalism is truly the forgotten aphrodisiac. I, I'm mm. very organized. Is there a T-shirt there somewhere? <laughs> I don't know. And it's just it's just more streamlined when mm. you have a form and everything goes in one place. Um, it's funny because when I interact with people via email, they will send me some information about themselves, mm-hmm. but they leave out all the details. Uh. And um, I guess people just are not used to bragging on themselves. Right. For instance, they'll tell me that they've been on the radio, but they won't tell me when or what year <laughs> or direct me to a link or anything. So I have to go back with you them, have like, to find all that gather out. more. Um, well, you know, that's, that's a good point because, uh, you know, we, we, you know, Matt, we should have a, we should have a form for our uh, tartar <laughs> sauce. It would be like, uh, when are you available? Get in here. You know, that would be our thing. No, we, 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 we try to be uh, a little more refined, but I, I think it's, it's, you know, 
that that brings up a good point because I, I was looking at at some of the things that you've been doing, and you've got like photos and uh, you know events. Uh, you you're really trying to promote the community. I am, and that's and that's great because you can't do that enough. I mean, because right. I use you know I volunteered down in fact I was just talking about this with somebody today, um, the Apollo Theater in downtown Peoria, which basically sits empty most of the time, mm. and that's because it's. Um, you know, it, it's it's all it is is the balcony left over from when they when they used to have a full theater. They're about 150 seats, so it's it's used for occasional shows. In fact, mm-hmm. some of your guests or some of the people you've had on perhaps have been there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, my thought was most people don't know what's what's going to be playing there mm-hmm. because it's only occasional, and if it's not something that's on a regular basis, like every weekend or whatever it is. You, you just don't know about it. It's, mm-hmm. it gets, I mean, I guess if you walk by the marquee and you see, oh, so-and-so is going to be there yeah. on Friday, you know. Well, how many people do that? And and nowadays people get their information from this imaginary phone that I'm holding in my hand. But, I mean, so, you know, it's, it's a whole different world. I wonder if people can look to Peoria Magazine's Art and Society. I was recently interviewed by them, and I was super impressed and surprised with the things that they promote in there. Yeah, that's no, that's that's the magazine that has. If you go to the back of it, it's got all these yes. pictures of groups. Yes, mm-hmm. I always get a kick out of that because you'll see the same person like twelve times <laughs> in one issue. <laughs> hey, no problem. I mean, I'm glad you're making it to all these events. <laughs> but it's like, I'll, I'll, when I see that, sometimes I go, I'm going to see if this person. Yeah, there he is. Oh, there he is again. You know, this guy <laughs> pops up everywhere. Anyway, but that's just my observation on that. Um, but no, they they do a good job. Um, color and and all that well Mm -hmm. it it tells you too unless you're i mean doing probably what you do which is receiving a lot of information and making a point to know what's going on there's so many things that go on right under your nose you're not aware yes i mean people will say peoria you know it's kind of a small town it's not like chicago or or st louis or something like that you don't have the same activity level Well, that's true of course but there's a lot more going on here than people realize. Now yes. you may not want to. And a lot pro- of potential. Partake. Yeah, yeah. Um, where would you? Are you? Uh, and I, I don't know if this is a fair question or not, but that's <laughs> we just throw everything at you here. What do you think? Is Peoria um, going the right direction in your mind, or is it uh, need a lot of work? Because you, you're coming into it what two years you've mm-hmm. been here, so that's enough time to just sort of just process the place compared to other places. Um, what's your thought? I think it wouldn't be. I like that face. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I well, don't freeze think that it would be. And use that. In the, what do you think of Peoria? Mm. <laughs> I um, I think it wouldn't be fair for an outsider to you still consider a yourself an outsider, <laughs> a transplant. Okay, transplant. Uh, to compare Peoria to, and I, I've lived in Atlanta. I received my master's there. I, I don't think it would be fair to do that, considering population and just the other resources well, yeah, not, there. Yeah, right. But I, I would have to say we absolutely are going. See, I said we. We are. Good. <laughs> we are going in the right direction. Just looking at the people that have been on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, just yesterday, I had Shama St. Louis on the show, and oh, if you're in Peoria, yep. you know who she is mm-hmm. and the things that she's done. She's definitely made a reputation for herself as being a community activist. Right. Um, media specialist and so many other things. Mm-hmm. But when you have people like that and the other artists that I've had, most most of the artists, they are using their art to promote prevention awareness for tragedies and traumas they've experienced mm-hmm. like rape and domestic violence. And the fact that people can speak out about all of those things, community injustices, all of it, you can't say we're not going in the right direction because everybody can't do that. I think we all just need a little more support. Oh, that's good. Well, that's a good point. I mean... And I and I knew it was a tough question because you know, Peoria compared to what? But I think my my observation on this, and we talked about it on past uh, programs, <clears throat> sometimes the people that have lived all their lives in Peoria, mm-hmm. I, and this is a gross generalization, mm-hmm. so it's not. <laughs> hey, I, that's what I'm given to doing. Uh, but sometimes they're the worst critics yeah. of Peoria because it's not to say that you know oh, there's nothing wrong here. You know, it's all perfect. No, no, no. It's just that sometimes you have to be somewhere else to, to compare it and say, well, you know, Peoria's got a really a remarkable history mm-hmm. yeah. you, you, that most people aren't aware of until they come here, unless they're, you know, big history buffs or something. But 
Um, I think I find that to be true. At least folks that you know, when you say I'm from so and so, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm, like you know, like mm-hmm. you got on the wrong bus. And, you know, <laughs> he dropped you off here, and I'm stuck. You know, I can't get out of Peoria. But I, you know, that seems like a you know that that's that's something that needs to change. Mm-hmm. You know, and, right? And maybe with shows like yours, it will change. Oh, thank you. They'll so. they'll be ready to to you know. Um, let's repeat again. Uh, folks want to see – now, your stuff, is it, it uh, are the past programs on YouTube? Yes. So somebody could go back and look up – Yes, well, if which, you insert Mike's Uncut um, and an episode or the person's name, it will come up. My brand page might be difficult to find. It's Ahava More, the mm-hmm. M-A-U-R-E and the Ahava, Ahava More. But all the episodes are on there, and they're also on my website. Great. And, you know, I think that would be worth checking out because – this is the these are people that maybe five years from now who knows how long hey i remember that that was so somebody right. was on that show you know and it'll be one of those That'd be uh, incredible. aha moments <laughs> well aha we, we have a g- great having you here because uh in fact we want you to let us know when season three officially dawns mm-hmm. and maybe we'll you know we'll come in and 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 plug it or do something with it and get. We're get, trying to have a premiere. Oh, so a premiere! That'd be nice. And where will you guys hold your premiere? We're looking at Landmark, and that's another a key the example of things that the happen. Landmark movie. Yeah, oh. um, they let um, indie films come in there. Um, of course, there's fees and everything, um, but it's not that expensive, and you can have a premiere. Be and, up there on the stage. Mm-hmm. Have the some thing. artists perform it. It's just it's more about it's not just superficially aesthetics. It's more about the pride of it. You know, mm-hmm. just for the job you want, not the one you have. And I have, you know, visualized red carpets and everyone dressed well, informally and coming in and doing our thing here. Oh, great. Well, that's that sounds like the general style I have to cover if you do that. So <laughs> let us know, please. Keep us posted. Well, it's been uh, Hava Moray. And, uh, again, it's Mike's Uncut is the program to look for online. And uh, we thank you for coming thank in. Thank you. And, uh, hey, we'll see you next time. On uh, oh, I want to plug uh, Matt. I, I mentioned his name, but Matt Dayhoff, <laughs> yeah, at the controls. We we always have to thank him because otherwise you would not see anything here and wouldn't hear anything. But anyway, we'll see you next time on Tartar Sauce. <laughs>